Hi, I'm Scott with Off Grid Whiskey and Sunshine. Today we're going to talk about specifically the MS261C. I'd like to do a review on it. I've had this saw about uh, two and a half, three years now. I feel like it's been long enough and I've used it enough so I can give a good, honest review. I'll tell you what I think about it. As you can see, this, uh, this is no collector's item. This saw gets used. This saw gets used a lot, actually. Um, as such, it's dirty. It's a tool. And it's due to be torn apart and cleaned. I usually do that when I switch chains. I flip the bar over and clean everything up real good and blow everything out good. Great little saw. Great little saw. I know it would be because they've been around for a while and they've always had good reviews. I have very, very, very few people complain about them. This one is the CS model. It says C, but it's actually the CS. Uh, what that means, if you look, you'll notice there are no screw holes anywhere to adjust your carburetor. That's because there's an onboard microprocessor that is adjusting your carburetor and your timing constantly. I care about how many times a second, but it is a lot. I was kind of skeptical about that at first, but after these last few years of running it, it's been absolutely fantastic. I've only reset it, I think, one time, and there's instructions that are in the owner's manual that explain to you exactly how to go about resetting it and putting it right back to the to the original settings, the default settings that it came with from the factory. I use an 18-inch bar on it, and I use the uh, 325 pitch. You could probably see the yellow link on the inside there, which means obviously that's pro full chisel chain. Um, I like that stuff. Uh, the I think it's the green stuff that's just below it that has the green link on the chain. It isn't bad either. That's kind of like a, a combination between a uh, safety chain and a and a full on professional chain. Those aren't bad either, but I I kind of like these pro chains better. So I've always had a 40 or 50 cc professional saw around. They're just too damned handy not to. This started way back in the days when Husqvarna had their um, little 242 XP. I had one of those. That was one of my first chainsaws. And then eventually they went up to like a 346 XP. And Jones Red had a similar saw with a 2153. They all basically used the same crankcases and stuff. So Steel came out with a 50cc saw to match that. Now these are professional saws. This is Steel's smallest professional ground saw meant made to be used while standing on the ground. Um, it's got everything that a big pro saw has, although this one's still got the 325 pitch chain on it. There's many different sizes of chains you can run. It's got just enough power so you can get away with that. Some people put a lot longer bars on them. They'll put 20, 22 inch bars. I find the sweet spot for this seems to be 18 inches. I like an 18 inch bar on this saw. I do have a 20. I do have a 20 and I use it sometimes. Lots of times when I'm limbing, it's really nice because uh, you don't have to, if you're cutting brush and stuff, you don't have to bend over as far. So that's nice. But as far as power goes, the sweet spot, 18 inch bar. 18 inch bar with a full comp chain. Now this being a pro saw, it's, it's got the magnesium alloy crankcase. It's made so it can be taken apart and rebuilt. Same can be said for the jug. The jug is made so it can be popped off in the field. If you want to take the cylinder head off, that can be done. Um, like it, it is just a smaller version of a professional saw. It's got one of the highest power to weight ratios in the industry. It's very fast, very high RPM. I would say if there was going to be one saw that I was going to own, if I could only have one, I'd pick this one. It's got enough power for everything I want to do, and it's small enough so I can get away with using it for everything if I have to. It's not ridiculously oversized. This, for a homesteader, is 
pie in the sky perfection. It just doesn't get any better than this. However, that's not saying anything bad against the Husqvarna 550. I have a friend who has one of those. I'm going to be honest with you. They're almost the identical saw. And I don't mean that in the parts will interchange because they won't. But as far as their power to weight ratio, how fast they cut, they're so close to being the same thing. And they're so close to being the same price. There really isn't any difference. They're really both really good saws. Jones Red doesn't make saws like that anymore. They've gone out of business. Nobody deals with them up here anymore. This thing, as far as I'm concerned, is it. I went with steel because I already had one. I figured, why not go to the same dealer for everything, so I just changed everything over to steel. Great little saw. Very tough. Starts easy. Never have a problem with it starting. Can't say enough good about it. I really can't. They did change a few things on it. One of the things that I wish they hadn't changed, you've got these screws on top. You turn a quarter of a turn and your air bonnet pops off the top, but you've got to kind of sneak it out from underneath your chain brake handle and your top handlebar. The old steel saws split right here. You just took the back of it off to get an air cleaner. That was kind of easy. That was I like I like that, and I kind of wish they'd get back to that. They also have the the the, the uh, quick opening caps, the toolless caps on the Byron chain oil, and on the gas tank. Some people love them, some people hate them. I'm kind of indifferent. This one doesn't seem to bother. Uh, one of my big ones doesn't vent very good, so that can cause problems. It seems to let air in so once the saw is running it runs great it doesn't pull a vacuum and quit and starve it for fuel the problem is sometimes when you leave them in the hot sun that tank will build pressure and the vent isn't working right it doesn't let the pressure off so you grab your saw to go and start it and you crank it over and once that pulse line opens up that little needle valve in your carburetor all that pressure shoots a whole bunch of gas in on top of your piston and it can flood it. Seems to be a problem with some of the steels, even some of the big saws. They're working on solving it. I don't know that it has anything to do with the caps. I just know that that problem happened right about the time they went to these caps because the old ones didn't do it. It's something in the tank design. I don't know what it is. So all I do is before I'm gonna start the saw, I just flip this, you see that pressure? Perfect example, perfect example. You go on to let the pressure off of them before you start them. The worst thing that can happen is you open it before it's time to open it is a half tank of fuel and it blows all the fuel out all over you. Then it's a real safety hazard. I've heard of that happening. So it's just something to watch. If there's a downside to these saws, that's it. There isn't any other. These things are tough. I've run this saw at 15 below, I'm uh, running at 100 degrees. It doesn't care. That automatic microprocessor adjusts everything, whether I'm running 40 to one or whether I'm running 50 to one fuel, it doesn't care. You'll hear it might not wind up as much for a minute. And then after you make a couple cuts with it, you'll hear it lean itself out and take right off or richen itself up, do what it needs to do. It does a good job of providing the power that it needs for the job you're doing. Keeps the, the power to the wood. And I know, like I said, they still sell both. My dealer was uh, Wallingford's, dad to uh, Auburn, Auburn, Maine, Wallingford Equipment. Uh, I asked their tech guys down there about it when I bought it, and they said they have had some problems with these newer Mtronic saws. But basically, if you're going to have a problem, it's going to be right off and it's going to be covered under warranty and you'll never have a problem with it again. I never had one hiccup. The thing has been flawless. I've seen people complain because they use a little bit too much fuel. I can't see the difference. I really don't. I really can't say that it uses any more fuel than, than my other saws do. It probably uses more than I, my little homeowner saw does, but... Um, I'm not that concerned with it. If it does use more fuel, it's not enough so that I've noticed it. These bar nuts are actually attached to this cover 
They're flanged on the inside. They're captive. They're captive or captured, whichever way you want to put it. So you're not going to lose them. That's nice. It's also got the, the side adjustment like most newer saws do instead of having it come through from the front. It comes with a decompressor. I, don't, I really don't think a 50cc saw needs a decompression button, but it's there if you want to use it. One other neat thing they did is they modified the ignition switch. This now doesn't have an off position. You push it up like that and that shuts the saw off and as soon as you let go, it defaults to run. So if you shut the saw off and set it down for 20 seconds and you pick it up and you want to start it again, you don't need to turn the switch back on, you just pick it up and crank it and you're going. That's kind of a new thing. But that's about it. Like I said, they're tough. Great little saw. The biggest downside to them is they are expensive. You're probably looking at uh, $625 to $650 for the saw, maybe an extra chain. It's money well spent if you need it. If you can afford it, I would advise anybody to buy a 261. You can't go wrong. Go ahead. Okay, so that's our video with the MS261CM chainsaw. If you like this chainsaw video, you can stop by Off Grid with Whiskey and Sunshine. Check out our other videos. We got lots of stuff on there about gardening, uh, Kubota tractors, um, solar power, because we are truly off grid. We're always up to something around here. So check back. And I'd like to thank you for watching.